Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. Today on the Sign Lens, we're going to take a look at four different sensor sizes and see how they compare with one another. Thanks to our sponsor, Bar Lenses, for shipping out all of these amazing cameras and lenses so that we could try them out and provide this test for you. They're a great resource for finding gear that you don't necessarily have at home. It's a great place to check out a different sensor size or the sensor size of your choice. Be able to have the equipment you need when you need it and then send it back and not have to buy it. Borrow lenses. Are you ready to make money in video? We're ready to teach you how. There's more demand than ever for video content and everyone you know is probably looking for someone to do it for them. We've got a great video basics download for you that'll help get you started on that road and help you make money in video. So go to theslantedlens.com and purchase your download today. First we have the Hasselblad X1D, which is a medium format sensor. It's the largest digital sensor on the market right now. Then we have the full frame camera, the A7R3. Then we go to 7D, which is an APS-C sensor, which is that crop sensor size. And last of all, Micro Four Thirds with that Panasonic GH5. We want to look at these four different sensor sizes and just see how they compare with each other with regards to depth of field, with regards to image quality. Grain structure, how much data is really coming through versus Artifacting? Who knows? I don't know what's going to happen. Let's take a look and see what they look like. So let's get started and see how they compare. So we just got back from the beach. We had five cameras. Five cameras? Four cameras. Well, we had our BTS, BTS camera, camera as well. Yeah. Three of us hauling stuff around the sand. Of course, the waves are coming in and we got sand we all over. We lost a couple cameras. <laughs> yeah, see, like, they're Just flying kidding. out. Like, people walking by going, wow, he's got too many cameras. Can I take one? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't take one. <laughs> Okay, so we're just going to quickly go through the focus images here and just starting at 3.2, which was the, the smallest aperture for the Hasselblad, your background falls way out of focus yeah, super at 3.2. Yeah, super quick. Super quick. I mean, it feels like less than a 2.8 on a full frame camera. It does. You know? It feels like very shallow depth <laughs> yeah. of field, very shallow. If you look at the GH5, and of course this image is a little overexposed, which is unfortunate, but the GH5 is in focus all the way down the California coast, man. Yeah, it's crazy. I did not it's, expect that to be so dramatically. Yeah. But if you look at the uh, 7D. You go to the Sony? Yeah, we go to the Sony. I feel like the difference between the 7D and the Sony is probably the least between all of them, you know? Yes. Like the Hasselblad to the Sony still feels kind of dramatic, the 7D, but then the Sony to the 7D, not as much. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So when we start to go to F4, I mean, it doesn't change that drastically. Uh, we go to 5.6, which is kind of optimal here to shoot. There's a 7D. Again, you say the 7D is looking very similar to the Sony. But again, that Hasselblad at 5.6, the background is still considerably more out of focus than the Sony. What I like about this is that you can shoot at your lens's optimal um, aperture in terms of sharpness and performance and still have a really shallow depth of field. You can on the Hasselblad. Yeah, on the Hasselblad, yeah, absolutely. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that you're absolutely right. I mean, yeah. you're at the optimal sharpness on that lens, and it's and you have a nice falling out of focus in the yeah, background. Whereas great. it's not the same on the uh, on the Sony. Uh, Sony at five six here. Yeah, the I mean, Sony. You're just, not seeing as much. You know, yeah. it, you're seeing more of the background. It's not quite as. Yep. You know, but if we jump up to say like f eleven, f eleven on the the GH five. Everything is in focus yeah. down there. I mean, it's in focus all the way down South America. I can see Chile right over there in the corner. Mm. Can you see it? <laughs> <laughs> so look at this is the Hasselblad at F11. I mean, we have to go all the way to 32 for the Hasselblad to finally be in focus yeah. on the rock back I was behind totally her. 32. E even at F22, that large rock behind her is still a little bit soft. Yeah, there's 22 Just right there. Just a tiny bit. Uh, look at the GH5 at F22. Everything's in yeah. focus. If you go all the way back to F16, which was the most we get on the uh, on the Sony. lens we had for the, for the Sony. Sony. So the question becomes here, and I think, well, what are the stop differences? So like, how do you match the depth of field from camera to camera? So we kind of came up with this at the Panasonic GH5 3.2. Looks very similar to the Sony A7R3 at 8.0. <laughs> looks very similar to the Canon 7D at 5.6 which looks very similar to the Hasselblad at F16. So yeah, you're looking at more than a four stop difference in terms of achieving the same depth of field for the cameras Yeah, across the spectrum. So what's interesting about that is the reality is that the Hasselblad can't give you the depth of yeah. focus that the GH5 right. can give you, you're right. but the GH5 can't give you the shallow depth mm -hmm. of field that the Hasselblad can give you. The thought that comes to my mind then is, 
sure the Hasselblad super high quality large sensor, but is it, it's not as flexible as say maybe a full frame sensor. Because to my mind, the full frame sensor can achieve very deep depth of field. It can also achieve very shallow depth of field if you open it up to 1.2 or something like that. So how does, the, how does the shallow depth of field compare when it's wide open versus the Hasselblad when that's wide open? Well, let's take a look at that. Okay, so here are each of these with the as wide open as the lenses that we had. Mm -hmm. So Which were all them. very fast they for, were. The, for the format. Um, we have, first of all, the Panasonic GH5 1.7. I mean, it is achieving a shallow depth of field here. That, that's, a, that's a workable portrait. Um, mm -hmm. I think for headshots and stuff, you might want to be able to go more shallow than that, but that's totally workable. Then the, you have the 7D, and that's, of course, a lot shallower, mm -hmm. larger, even though it's pretty much the same aperture. Uh, and then the step up is the A7R3, and holy cow, like at that 1.2, it is, it's the background's just gone. So it's out of focus, Very so isolated pretty. focus, very beautiful look. But the Hasselblad at a 3.2, it, again, you have more detail in the background. It's not as not as out of narrow focus. Point, uh, it's not as shallow of a depth of field. So even at three at three point two, the Hasselblad is not as shallow as the Sony at one point two. Yeah, exactly. So again, well, that makes sense. The Hasselblad struggles uh, on giving you depth. Mm -hmm. uh, the GH five gives you depth, but struggles giving you shallow. Mm -hmm. So the A7R three and the 7D are kind of more in the middle and they're giving you a little bit on both sides. And it looks like the A7R three is really giving you more- More on each end. More on each end. <laughs> and which really moves us to the next side and that is that the A7R three is a 42 megapixel camera. Right. right. And the Hasselblad is a 50, right? Yeah, so it edges it out a little bit. It edges it out a little bit. But when you go to blow those up, when we looked at blowing them up at 300 DPI, the Hasselblad will give you the same width, 26 inches, mm -hmm. and the A7 III only gives you like 17 inches high, but the Hasselblad will give you like 22 inches. This has really kind of made me realize that I think a full frame camera is the most flexible tool. Yes. Because you can shoot at your F22 and you have everything in focus. You can shoot at your F1.2 and you have nothing in focus. So what's interesting then, then is the, uh, the A7 III mm -hmm. becomes a compromise in, in another way in that it's a little lower megapixel. Right, you're but not gonna still blow got, it up as much. You're not gonna blow it up as much, but you still have that larger sensor, which yeah. is gonna give you the nice depth of field. Mm -hmm. So it's a comprom it's a it's in between the 7D and the A7R3 mm -hmm. is looking at just size of, of uh, sensor and sensor quality. I which, mean, uh, man, we can test this a million different yeah, ways. I'm having a hard time as a thinking as a landscape photographer why you'd be using that large sensor for focused issues, but we'd have to talk to a landscape person that'd probably say, well, it's because of this, you bozo. <laughs> you know, what are you well, thinking? Well, let's pull up, we took a landscape photo, let's look at we that. We did, let's look at that. All right, so here's, uh, this was really late in the day. I mean, the sun's down at this point. Yeah. It's very, very dark. Very dark. So there's there's a good amount of depth of field on all the cameras. Um, obviously, the Hasselblad will be the least. Looking at the images, I can definitely see where the smaller pixel, smaller sensor size on the GH5 stands out. Like, it's gritty, it's grainy. Yep. Um, it just feels a little more, less detailed. The 7D is okay. The A7R three and the Hasselblad both look real, I mean, they both kind of look the same to me almost in terms of noise structure and how the image looks. Okay, so let's look at, this is all shot at 1600 ISO. They're all hurting. <laughs> They're all hurting. Um, some of these are really gritty. The, you look at the GH5 and the 7D. I mean, the 7D is actually grittier than the GH5 to my it eye. It looks terrible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the Hasselblad is really, it's pretty smooth for yeah. 1600. and. And this and is where the A7R3 A7 actually R3. does kind of fall behind. Yeah. And that's all how it is with the Sonys. They don't perform well when you start pushing the ISO. I mean, to go back to the question that started this all, does sensor size matter? Yes, it does to a certain extent. If you want a high performing camera, I can't recommend the Micro Four Thirds. I don't even know if I can recommend the APS-C, honestly, which no. surprised me. Because I've always thought, man, APS-C, you know, Super 35, doesn't matter. Um, the full frame is definitely the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. I don't see a huge improvement based on the, the few things we shot with the medium format, but that's just me. No, I, I agree with you. It's really not enough to make it worth it to me. 
Yeah. Like, and your lenses are more money. Everything's yeah. more money. You don't just step up with a camera. You step up with the whole system. Right. Again, that full frame sensor seems to be a sweet spot. Gives you great depth of field uh, control, be able to get things out of focus, be able to get things in focus. Gives you a really decent image size. On the A7R 3 you know, that full frame, be able to blow that up. So there you have it. Does sensor size matter? Well, maybe not quite in the way that you might have thought. So keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking. If you liked our lesson here today, we would love it if you'd follow us here on YouTube. And like us, follow us, do all those kinds of things to join the Slam Lens community. And be sure to leave very angry comments in this YouTube video and tell us all the things we did wrong. We did a lot of things wrong, so there'll be long comments. I'm, I'm sure. sure there'll be lots of things you'll be able to say. What were you guys thinking? But pitch us some tests. There are some exciting cameras that are coming out. Maybe some cameras that we've missed in the past. So pitch us some tests. Maybe we'll uh, take them into consideration and use them in the next couple months. Absolutely. So make sure you follow us here on the Slide Lens. That really helps us out. And leave a comment. We love that. So, does size matter when it comes to sensors? Well, maybe not quite in the way you might have thought. So keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking.